shown you all these beautiful tricks and now you can you're so inspired and you've already run around your town and taken a bunch of pictures and you're ready to go and paint we're going to start with this one i'm going to jump back over to the other building um so i can show you how i uh, do some of the little details on something like that this one, as I said, I did sketch this in. Now, you will find some artists will get very upset if you trace something. Um, for speed of just getting ready for this demo and, and things, I went ahead and I made myself a copy. I gave myself my basic outline. Then I used this and I had taped it to my, my board. Um, and I gave myself my basic shapes because it's, it's a time saver. I didn't want to, if I sat there and drew this by hand because I wanted it to be accurate, um, I, I could, but it would take me a lot longer than, uh, basically I was just giving myself those basic, here's, the statue, here's the church. Um, what you find is you you will find some artists that say, oh, that's cheating, and others will say, no, you're saving yourself time, and you're also, um, once you're done with your tracing, you will find you still have to go back in there and make sense of some of the lines that you've made. So I am not one of those that think, oh, you can't do that. Um, there again, I, I mentioned I do um, stained glass too, and I made myself a light table so I could look at the different glass. Plus, I use it for tracing things. Um, if you don't have something like that at home, but you want to try tracing um, something, you can easily, what I used to do before I, I had the space and made that table, I took, let's pretend this is a frame with a piece of glass in it. I used to um, take that like this. I put my paper that I was going to trace. I put a light down below me and then I could see through that enough to give myself a tracing. And then a lot of times people will just tape it up to the window on a sunny day and they can get that same tracing. So if you have something that, you know, in, in, it's actually, it's another way to help you get comfortable with drawing. So that's another reason why I don't think it's such an issue, you know, and uh, to get more details and things. It's, there's no shame in, in that tracing. What I do warn you about, though, is once you are done with it, I tend to, um, I'll break up my the line that is on there. Let me just come over on this side here. So I don't want any harsh, harsh lines. And the other thing with watercolor paper, because there is a sizing on this, there is um, a, a chance, depending on what you're using on it. I, I've been treating all this pretty rough today, but I, I still haven't, um, you can make it pill. If you sat there and rubbed and rubbed on it, you're, you're just going to um, bring up the fibers and then that will create a, an issue. So if you are sketching on this and even if you're just using your pencil, as you see, I'm just using a, a little cheap mechanical pencil here. I try to keep my lines pretty light to begin with. Especially with the transparent watercolor. Sometimes it bothers me if I see a pencil line under there and it's too dark. Um, so I have a tendency to come back and I try to lighten uh, a lot of those marks or at least break them up. Um, if you look at old watercolors um, in the yeah, a museum or, or something like well, there's that sergeant house and uh, if you get up close enough you'll see their little drawing lines 
and that is one thing with a lot of watercolor. Now, when I did the the wood scene there, I I didn't really draw anything on it, so I approached that one differently than I am something like this. When I'm working with something more detailed, I um, am going to want to give myself a lot of information, and so. I'm just showing you that when you come back in here, and if you want to lighten up some of these lines, but what you don't want to do is you don't want to sit there and scrub away at it. You also want to make sure your eraser is clean because you can introduce some issues if you, oh, see now it's not making a mark for me. Oh, too bad. Okay, I've scuffed up my paper a little bit because the end of my um, eraser wasn't clean. So if you do have a deep tend to use the white erasers as opposed to sometimes the pink one might make a, a pinkish mark. So if you're drawing your paint or doing a pencil drawing first and you want to lighten those lines or as you're drawing them and, and all of a sudden you go, oh, well, I made his head way too big, you know, you can still come in there, but just do it lightly because you can um, kind of mark the paper. All right, so as I said, now I'm going to start with this one because I want to lay in my background. I want to lay in that sky. And so we're going to look at how I'm going to cut that. Um, probably could have. I'm going to shorten some of these legs here. Now when I'm, I'm at home, a lot of times I will um, work on my watercolors in the living room. And I have a little corner, I have a little carpet that I put out there, just so I'm not getting everything dirty. But, oh, I kind of back that in there. Um, if you came to my house, a lot of times you would just see me sitting in my little chair and I've got my board leaning up against something and I'm, I'm painting away. So you don't have to have an elaborate or fancy setup at all. And that's one of the nice things about watercolor. It is pretty portable. If I am working on something uh, pastel, dusty. I keep that in the art room and oil painting. I tend not to use a lot of solvents, but um, why are you not lifting here? I haven't used this for a while. <laughs> oh, that's it. Um, as you see, I'm intentionally putting this on upside down. In case you thought you were going to catch me and say, she's painting upside down. Alright, because what I'm going to do is I want to do, um, I don't know if I have that many clouds. I'm going to be wetting the areas that I want my sky in. But I'm going to avoid the areas that there is no sky. Um... For some of those bigger areas, I'm going to use that big flat brush. For the areas where I need to um, create detail, it's, it's going to be as if I'm painting with water. I, I want to, um, because if I wet an area and then apply paint to it, for instance, in this little area in between his legs here, I, I'm, I'm going to wet that and then add a little bit of color. But if I get it into the other parts of the sculpture, then uh, you're going to see that color. It's, um, I don't know that I'm making much sense with the way I'm saying that. Anyway, let's try this. Okay, I'm... As I said, the wet on wet like this, it's something that um, I use more 
in a sky than I use as I'm painting uh, something else, like a, a figure or whatever. As you see, the water is dripping down here. Even when it's paint, I don't worry about it. I, you can always blot it up. And if you change the angle of your head, you can see how wet your paper is getting or isn't getting. So some of these bigger areas I can come in here and maybe I just want to get those main areas wet. Not so much all that detail because I can do that when I come back with the color. Okay, because actually now I just dripped into his little arm. Um, that's not going to be the end of the world. We can deal with that. And this is just one approach, one way of doing things. Uh, you will see a lot of watercolors will tend to work flat. Um, and that is because it, everything uh, is so fluid that, of course, gravity is going to take it down. And there are stands, there are easels that you can... In fact, if I needed to, I can pull this back and give myself um, much less of an angle to work with, but I'm not that concerned with that right now. The tree, I'm going to go over that because the little bit of blue that might end up on it is not going to affect how that tree is painted later. But right now, I'm just going to... It's also kind of disorientating when you're looking at it upside down. You're like, oh, what part is that? Okay. So. That's pretty purple. One thing I did find is... Um, I was mentioning I had bought a couple of new paints from this um, Turner and it's this vibrant purple and then this kind of soft blue which uh, it's got a nice sky blue to it. Now, as I, even though I am upside down I'm still kind of thinking oh do I want some clouds in here? Um, and the painting, the focus is, is more so on the statue and the church. So I don't necessarily need to say a lot with that sky. So I, you know, I, I can stick with just even using this one color and water. And then that can pull my... Um, kind of a cloud shapes into it and just give you that wispy. So now, as I said, this Turner is, is actually kind of a, a unique color. It's a very nice sky color. The, the one that you'll see a lot, um, people might use, this is more, it's a manganese. Come here, you. There again, when you're kind of even figuring out what colors are you going to use uh, as a whole to pull things out. Now, as you can see, this is a beautiful, and they, you can add that in there with the other color and uh, bring a little bit more variety. Now, the fact that I am using a flat, you see those, those brush strokes. I might not want it that... Um, oh you know, it's structured, <laughs> it's a, a square. Just soften it with the, the water, or you switch to your round. Um, a bigger round. There again, I tend to use this brush a lot, and we've got this big round. Now 
that was a another little project I've been working on is um, actually sorting my brushes and kind of discovering some that have been stuck in a, a jar in a way. Now as you see how strong the color is here, um, don't worry about that because you can come back in and just soften that edge and pull that color around. And when you see still that, the, the thing you don't want to do is you will, you will find that um, as you're working on watercolor, you only have so much of a window to come back and if you do make some of a harsh lines, sometimes it is hard to come back and soften things as much as you might want to. Um, so you don't want to like lay this in like that and then walk away and say, okay, I'll, um, I have to go start dinner. Uh, you need to, it's, it's like keeping a wet line if you're painting a, a wall. Uh, you want to keep that soft, especially just in the sky. Here, here we go away there. That's what I get for using old sheets. Where am I? There I am. <laughs> I'm like, Deb, where is this? You can tell I don't use this stand very often. Usually I know my equipment better. Uh huh, that's why. I have a second easel back there and I keep grabbing that one. That's why I'm not actually making any improvements here. Okay. Alright, I'm going to let that travel for a while and see what's happening. Some of these brushes, that, like this, I'm going to put this one down now because it's too soft. See how I can just kind of... and um, for me, I'm not crazy about that. At least for what I'm using this for right now. Okay, I'm going to... Just come in here. Now some of those areas I have actually doodled enough that I kind of dried up that uh, paper already. Now the fact that we have a basically a white building and a white um, statue. I mean, they're all grays and, and things. You can go pretty strong with your color in the sky. Uh, but you also still want to keep it so it stays as a sky and doesn't just come jumping out at you that much. And there's a, if you find sometimes when your brushes will give, let go of a, a hair or two, you want to pick that up because it, it sometimes can create uh, and dry as a little line. All right, down here, I haven't quite decided how far um, the trees will go. So there again, it's not going to make a big difference if I carry that sky all the way down. Hey, you come back here. Oh, that was another thing. See how they angle the end of this brush? Um, it's actually done that as a tool. Because you will find that some painters like to come in and score something. Like maybe I want to score uh, trees. If I had more pigment in this area, and I will show that to you in a minute. I just want to finish up this sky so it's not too disjointed looking. And there again, you will find some watercolorists are totally comfortable working um, standing up. I have a tendency to um, work with the board on my lap and so I'll, I'll work sitting down more than not. But it's it's a good idea to kind of just play with it. 
see does it make a difference in, in the way you control the paint. As you can see, I'm just cutting around my building right now. Now, my paper, if you, if you were to hold your hand here, it would feel much warmer. The areas that I do have that have gotten wet, they're cooler. And it doesn't look like it's that wet, but I can still feel the coolness. This type of thing where, I don't know if you can, it's such a light color, there is a, a big puddle here that's ready to come dropping down. If you see that and that isn't something that you want, you just tap your brush up in there and you can collect that extra paint. It's not going to um, bother anything. So even though when I first was cutting that in, um, now I it's dried a little bit, but it's still damp enough that it's allowing me a little bit more movement than I would have um, if I were just painting. Uh, and we can show you that. If I were just painting dry, um, maybe not so much with this color. Yeah. This color lifts pretty good, so I guess that's not the greatest show or thing to show you that with. Yeah, and I can make it totally disappear. This is a new pigment to me, so that's I'm kind of discovering things along as we go here. Um, but it works nicely for getting that little wispy background sky. And as you see, by using this flat brush, it does give me a lot of um, variance in, and you're just going to use all different parts of that brush because I can still cut in with this little ding here, even I'm just using the edge of the brush. So you don't have to necessarily have that many brushes to get going. I would recommend that you buy um, like a number eight um, round, like I was showing you earlier, um, a, a half inch or inch uh, flat is good. You can even start painting just with those two brushes. Um, when you get into more detail or if you're finding that you're just having t too much trouble um, and you need something to get into all those little tinier areas you can buy smaller brushes the um, the round I didn't bring a lot with me but um, come here this guy is the same brush family as this one it's a number two um, so I've got uh, much finer that I'm going to be able to get some of these little details with. So for the most part, I'm probably going to use that brush over this one. But for what we're doing right now, and it's good to step back because as you can see, well, for one thing, what the heck's that? Um, that needs to blend in there. Alright, so now I was using just that big brush, but I, if I wanted to come in here just as easy with following along, you might want to try, you can do the edges of your space, but this is what I'm saying, don't walk away from that, because it, if you let that sit long enough, Maybe not with this pigment. With other pigments, you will. Um, that's when you see me using my scrubber brush because I'm trying to soften that end. But um, certain pigments will just soak right in there, and they're hard to move sometimes. So this is kind of actually giving me kind of that nice little outline edge. And what is this water?
you can build up the the sky as you go on. Uh, that's not as I said with watercolor. You you can talk to somebody and, and they'll say, oh yeah, that that it's probably twenty layers because you're you're building up the strength of the color. Now I just tap that into green. Let me get rid of that. Also, I um, am not, some watercolorists I've met, they will totally drain their um, palette if they're between paintings and they'll start over. And that to me is just kind of, um, I don't know, wasteful. You, there's no reason that you can't just add water in reconstitute your, your paints. But as I, I said, the, sometimes I might have a palette that I'm working on a certain painting for. And then I, even the little small round palettes, I think they still have about 10 wells in them. And then there's a, an area in the center that you can mix in. A lot of times if I do have uh, particular colors or something that I need for something, I will um, have a palette for different paintings. Otherwise, I just kind of use a general palette. And as you know, sometimes when you're talking to artists, they're like, oh, I only use this yellow and this. It, with, for one thing, as you saw from the swatch card, I've collected all these colors all over the years. So um, to me, it's more exciting. It's like, well, well, let's try this combination. Let's try this. Just, you know, use what you have. Um, and then this was also an example of, this was a tone on tone where it was more of an experiment. And um, after I drew that out, what I was doing is, um, um, I started with the darkest areas. Even though my paint color was maybe this, this tone, um, I started dark and every time I came back through, those darker areas would get another wash. Um, and I kept avoiding all the white areas until I was building up more of a contrast. This is still a work in progress, but um, as you can see, you can do a lot with just a little. This is actually not a tube paint. It's a, a mixture of ultramarine uh, and sienna. And I'm taking a little bit more liberties and maybe bringing in a little bit of warmer tone. But you don't have to have every color in the world to, to um, create your painting. You, you just want to build the difference of the values, you know, from your lightest value to your darkest value. Um, so that's just uh, to show that the layers are built. All right, as you see, I, I'm getting this funny line because I do have it elevated, and so... When you do see those, and you don't want them in there, that's where I'm just going to come back in here with a little water and pull that back out. I could probably use Mr. Clean on there too, but the other thing you can do also is with your wet rag, um, and actually, if I had an area... that was uh, a stronger color. Sometimes uh, you'll see a paint, a pigment might, um, I don't know if you saw, there was a kind of a hard piece of that. That might just be a little bit dry. Okay. So if you have maybe an, 
a darker area. This is very wet. But maybe I'm not liking that. So I'm going to take my damp rag or my um, paper towel. I can do that too. I'm just going to come in here. And this is also another way to treat your background if if you've got this beautiful portrait of a, a head or something but then you want that kind of modeled look you can do that by popping in there with your um, your damp rag and you'll pull some of that out same thing I can take this uh, rag to kind of soften some of those areas now I'm going to come back in here just because I think that color was looking kind of nice in there. Look at that. So as I sit in my living room working on my painting in the corner, I do, um, when I get up to go grab a cup of coffee or uh, whatever I'm doing, I will stand the painting that I'm working on and turn it around so I can look at it from a distance because that's where you're going to start to, when you're always close up on it, you are not going to be able to see the things that you wish you had seen earlier. So you'll step back and you'll go, oh my gosh, would you look at that? And all of a sudden, there's there's just something there that you're like, oh, man. Um, and that's just because you're working up so close to it the whole time. And you need to step back. All right, let's set straight across. Another thing to do is you're creating something like this that has a um, no shape, what, whatever, it's, it's just kind of um, very organic, I guess we can say. You pay attention to, to as you're creating your painting, you want to think about, well, if somebody's looking at this, um, the, the diagonals make things flow. It, it, you want the person's eye as they come into the painting and you know, this sweeping motion that the clouds are doing a little bit now, um, that works. See, now if I want to lighten a little bit of this even more, as I said, this is going to dry a little bit lighter. Um, but if I think I need a little bit more clouds in there, and maybe... So, as you can see, you're not always using a paintbrush when you're painting with watercolor. You can use your rake and try to create something. So I'm just going to step back again. Yeah, see, now I, I thought, oh, that looks good. And then now I step back from it. I'm like, oh, my gosh, this needs, this is too sharp. It's, it doesn't read well from a, a distance. So let me kind of lumpy. Alright. We're not gonna worry about this guy. Right now. Another thing that you will find artists will do or suggest is when you step back, you want to look at it through a mirror. If you're having trouble with a painting and if you can get behind it and look and you'll say oh wow look at that um there again it's changing your your perspective these little lumps there are hideous <laughs> so i'm just gonna block those in all right well this is setting up a little bit that's about as far as I'm going to go right now, just to throw in that sky. Um, the day I was 
on the, the town common taking care or taking these photos. They have a, a lot of Christmas trees out there with uh, I believe mittens and socks and, and things. So um, I don't necessarily have to keep those in my painting, but why not? So I, I've got this little, um, just one tree in here, and I'm not really looking so much at what the colors are there. You can do whatever you want and make a little... The areas that I'm going to stay away from right now are the, the areas that are touching that sky. But down here, I there's no reason I can't um, get a little paint started on some of these areas. And there again, you can just use whatever artistic license you want to do something like that. Um, as you can see in our, our picture, when you're looking at, at your values and, you know, it, the light, it was a, a cloudy day, so that's another thing that, well, it, I suppose it was somewhat cloudy. Um, I didn't have any strong shadows. So sometimes when you are taking your photos, you, you kind of want to get out there at the uh, time of day where it's going to give you some kind of shadow or interest and things. At this point, you know, we're just kind of seeing snow. It's not the most important part of our painting to begin with. So I'm not going to worry too much about it. Um, but I am going to put some in there. I am going to... Oh, let's see. What do you look like here? Okay. Now, for instance, on our statue, if I am going to kind of mix up a gray that I want to use for him, and uh, let's see. Ooh, a grizzle in there. Another good thing to do is to keep a, a piece, especially if you're mixing, keep a little piece of paper. So you can see what are you coming up with. Um, right now this gray as I'm going for is a little bit too, I put too much red into it. Um, you can just play around until you get the color you want. Well, it's kind of a happier. But as you can see, um, and even as I started, I will clean out the well and start fresh if I, I feel I need to. But a lot of times I just kind of rework with whatever's there. And another artist might tell you, oh, no, I, I totally clean that up. And, you know, that's, that's fine. That's just their style of, of working and it is for you to discover as you paint and another thing with a lot of watercolor especially if you're working more realistically 
uh, your drawing skills need to really, you want to work on it, but don't feel intimidated. Um, that's probably one of the biggest things that keeps a lot of people from painting. Um, is the minute they, they hear that they need to draw something, they, they ah. um, you're not going to get any better if you don't try. And so you just need to and practice things. Um, I'm actually kind of taking myself back to some of the basics. All right, so now this is one of those colors I was talking about. This is a staining color. And see how I'm fighting with it a little bit more to get it to flow. Now on this edge, because um, it is, it, it stains, it just goes right in there. So even if I soften that, that I'm, it's going to be that Mr. Clean, I guess. Um, so from the other side, I'm going to try a little bit different. I have got that whole area damp now. So I am coming in here. And this part of the memorial actually has a lot of type on it. And I am not going to try to spell out all that type, but I probably will be able to give it at least the illusion that it does have uh, some type to it. So as you can see, sometimes it's just a matter of lifting the color as much as it is of laying it down. like this statue, uh, a lot of the work is going to all be done with the same color. Uh, it's the building up of the layers, like I was showing you with that other painting, is that I can go um, a lot of times actually if I start even lighter. make that my consistent base color. Um, you can also just kind of test things off on the side where you know that the frame's going to be going anyway. All right. So part of this, as you see, I cut my base off when I took the picture, but I'm the type that if you give me the paper, I I keep going with it. So the I looked at a couple of the websites. Come here, you. Oh. So here's a, a picture, I think from the one of the Upton Town. This actually could have been from I was looking up the statue itself, and this actually could be from that website that gave me um, more information about the the statue itself. So since and it was snowing, so I had more snow on the base. Um, and then when I sat down to sketch this, I went, oh, wait a minute. Um, I don't have that, the full base, and I didn't want to just cut it off where my picture did. So it, it's just another approach. You get your information where you need. As you can see, what I'm doing now is I'm looking at the areas that are darker and I'm going to paint those first because as I come down with a second layer I can build that up um, another shape. And as you see, there again, now this brush, 
is um, uh, they refer to it as a angle. So it's like a flat, but it has that, that angle cut to it. And it's, uh, I find these also uh, a good thing to have. They call them shaders sometimes. And you definitely will see them in some of your, you know, craft um, packages of when they have a lot of different paint or brushes. And my sister actually, and I think it was from Michael's, uh, when she's doing crafts with her uh, grandchildren, usually I expect to see these brushes that, you know, the kind that we had in grade school and everything. And she had this big tin and it had just a real nice assortment and it had um, shaders in it, it had flats, and it, it was just, I thought, wow, they've come, come up quite a, a ways from what they used to offer. And so that was, you can always keep your eye open for kind of cool things like that. Now, see, a lot of these, it's very subtle. You do have the, you know, the shape of the base there cur curves out, so the light's hitting it more, so it's a little lighter. This area is, um, you know, vertical to the sun, so it's catching a little bit more shade. So as you create, and this, these are the kind of things that are, are fun to, you know, train yourself on, um, because the more you start to notice those subtleties and add those to your painting, um, you know, it just it can pull that painting together so much and give you all that, that little detail. And as you can see, it's, um, it shapes. You know, I look at that, I go, oh, okay, it's this doesn't have to be perfect. Um, it's, you just kind of let it flow and look at, okay, so you got that shape, and then we're going to come here, have another little seam in our rock, and then, but see this, this um, shader, which is also kind of acting as a flat, it gives me that nice, consistent, where I can just make one stroke and get a lot of information on there um, pretty quickly. Now I'm seeing that apparently I missed a few details, but I'm not that concerned. Um, if somebody does come back and, and say, hey, that's not what that base looks like, and then I'll say, okay, well, I'll paint you a nicer one. But that's where this one is going to be for today. But see how when I laid that darker tone in just that one little area, now this time I was able to come back over that area, but now I've created like two surfaces there. And so that's the kind of thing that um, as as you're working with watercolor, it, it can be so much fun because you can just build up those the darkness and um, as I make that a little wetter because right now we can kind of lock that in a little bit as if if we were putting in some of that that type just to. give you that illusion that there is something written on them. Um, also, as you come down to some of these areas like this, they've actually got little stars carved in there. Same thing, when you start with that, you don't want to outline that whole star. You're just going to pick up um, the little shadow and then all of a sudden it does it starts to read as if there is that star all the way in there so you 
can do also what they call as negative painting, where um, I guess on the tree line that would have been a better thing. Or maybe even this tree line. When you're looking you know, through all your, your different colors into your woods and things. But you still want to give that illusion of um, depth and structure that there, there's trees back there and things. So what you can do is if with the fact that those are, they, I laid them in light as I began and then kept coming a little bit darker. But now you could come back in with another layer and you just kind of start to suggest that there's branches and things. And, and what's fun about that is that it makes you look at some of the little shapes that the, the paint kind of created as you began. So you see just like, it's probably very faint for you right there, but I can see there's this little lighter spot here and darker spot. So if you come back in and take that darker spot and make it even just a little bit darker, you, you start to bring in a little bit more detail and without, you don't want to cover up your lighter layer, layers. You want to um, kind of keep that fresh and, and let it play in there and just kind of doodle around. And this is why the painting might look like it comes together pretty quickly, but sometimes uh, somebody may have spent 20 hours because they were doing something like this. So it's always funny when people say, how long did that take you to do? It's like, well, I don't know. It took as long as it took to, to get there. But so in one respect, this is kind of, this is referred to um, as negative painting where you're kind of just pulling things out from what's already back there and just increasing um, there again you're increasing the, the difference of the values between that lighter color and then that darker color and with the fact that the watercolor does uh, tend to uh, change a little bit when it dries um, that's something else to, to keep in mind with some of these areas all right, um, let me see, let me, I guess my sky, I was thinking I was going to have to go over to the other, um, the building, but this actually is setting up pretty well. Now, one thing nice is with, a, um, you know, the computer, how you can just kind of zoom right in there and all of a sudden you go, oh, there's a little windmill and or weather rain, but it, it helps you kind of look at some of the detail of, of what, what is that, what's causing, um, because basically it, it's tone on tone. So if I want to work on my, my guy here, and I'm actually surprised I've been working this close without putting my glasses back on, <laughs> but it's, um, Let's see if I start fogging myself up again. Yeah, I'm fine. Sometimes, as you can tell, I don't use my glasses, and sometimes I do. And I think I'm going to just get rid of them. So, there again, I'm, I usually will come back in, start something like him, where he's a lot of the just different shades of that gray. I'm going to start with my darkest area and I'm just going to continue to build those areas up. You just want to look, look for the, what creates the difference that allows your eye to read it that way. You look for those shapes. 
see right there under his chin, it, it's, it's like a triangle. Um, that's more of an arc. Start with those areas that are a little bit deeper, and then you slowly build things up. So at least this style of um, painting, it's not always the fastest. Um, it just depends on, you know, you, your results, your personality. You might, you'll come up with something totally different. Um, and, but this is the way we're approaching it today. Okay, then, same thing, if I don't like that hard line, I can come in there just with a little water and soften that real quick. But this is um, what I was referring to as a staining color. So it, it's going to um, kind of darken a lot quicker than, or not darken, but stain the paper a little bit quicker. And really you don't have to get every nuance, you are just kind of creating that illusion. Alright, let's come with his armpit again here. just to stick in the one spot there. So, oh, see, I never did put any sky in between his legs, so we'll have to come back and do that. He's, he's missing the blue between his, his pants here. become more familiar with the different brushes that you do have um, and the, the different strokes that they can create, um, you'll know which, which brush to grab for or where you need to uh, when you need to change or, or whatever because even this brush um, Sometimes it just feels a little bit too thick. But that's also another reason why you'll see me drag the water, the moisture off of it. Because I want to get back to that point. I need that detail. So even when it has um, pigment on it, it might not look like much. And that's another thing, I guess, with my palette. You'll see <laughs> these little doobies all over the place. And sometimes I use those as the color I'm painting with. But sometimes I'm, I'm just trying to pull that um, brush back down to its point. It's still, that is also another thing about a good quality brush. Um, with the sable, in, back here in the body, it can hold a lot of moisture, a lot more moisture than you would um, possibly imagine. Um, and you will notice the difference between the $2 brush and... Um, Actually, some of these smaller ones, they, they really are not that expensive, even if they are. This is um, from Cheap Joe's. It's called Dragon Tongue, and that's one of the series. He's got a cat's tongue that has a lot of um, uh, body to it, too. And as a watercolor, so that's, that's where a lot of your um, paint is, is staying there. But you still need to, the reason you have this brush is that point. And um, so if you need to get back into that uh, that little tiny area there. That's why you see me tapping that out and just kind of brushing it out onto my palette here because I'm, I'm trying to pull that back down into the point. Now, there again, I, I said I'm 
but I'm kind of bringing in some of these, the details, just of those folds. I want to start with those, but right now it, it still it doesn't have enough definition, and that's because his leg is the same color on both sides. And so we are going to eventually build that up. And even with the um, the other building with its um, ornate um, carvings and things, uh, that's basically the same thing that we would be doing. We'd start um, bringing that darkness into that area, but not necessarily all at once. I tend to uh, build the thickness up. When you're, you're painting something like the, the clock, um, for this size painting, for what's going on, you don't have to have every um, detail. You just are giving the illusion. to different areas of the painting, part of what I'm doing, or I'm, as I'm thinking about it, is I'm letting some of those other areas dry while it's like, well, while he sets up a little bit, I can come over here and start working on uh, some of this part of the building. So that's also another reason why you'll see me kind of bounce around on what's going on here. But as the fact that the white is my paper, I am going to um, want to be conscious of, okay, what needs absolutely... They to stay that, that full white. And where are those shadows? So even in certain like the way that this there again with that the light it wasn't real strong that day but in order for me to recess my doors make my pillars come out what I can do is I can give them I start pushing them back with um, a layer too dark. But to kind of create a little bit of depth back there. OK. 
Okay, I'm also, what I'm conscious of as I'm doing this, it, I don't know if it's very evident to you, but this is a little bit lighter here than it is up here. Um, and that's just the, the cast of the building, the, the portico going down. Um, I want to... Oh, I picked up a little bit of yellow in there. If something surprises you, don't let it freak you out because you can always work with it. Um, well, for the most part, you can work with it, I'm sure. All right, there again, I want that lightness, but um, instead of just carrying the color down, I can come back in here with just some water and I'm pulling that color down and then it naturally will fade because you you put your pigment up here and you had water down here so you're um, allowing that to kind of create that illusion of a that there's more of a shadow because of that roof line and then now the sun's kind of coming into your might not look like much right now but these are the the things that as you're doing this type of of um, painting of watercolor of a architectural where um you know you're depend, depending on your your painting style and sure there's much looser um versions of something like this but this is my approach. Now, some of these areas probably look the same tone to you. Um, there again, as I lay this in, I know that I'm going to be coming back in and adding a little bit more detail. Up in um, above this doorway, there actually is uh, quite a bit of um, architectural detail that's, that's more like, like this one, where you've got um, all these carvings and things. And... Actually, even while we have this guy here, uh, just to show you that sometimes I just come in here with, and there again, I'm using this shader, but I'm using just the point of the brush. And I'm increasing the um, contrast, which allows me to start pulling the architectural detail out of my painting here, or in my drawing. And sometimes I will just start out doing the, the main lines that I see, and then I will pull out um, if something gets too dark, I, I might have to, to pull it out. But if you can just kind of bring out those, those little points of shadow that create the illusion um, where then somebody goes, oh, I recognize that building, I, I see that. But it's one of the... Fun things about painting, you have the control and you just got to continue 
doing it. See, now I should at least have my little um, drawing with me because I'm like starting to lose. Okay, where am I doing there? So I'm going to put you down. A little side line. Okay. The other thing is um, right now I was using the same color as I was using for here. So eventually um, I'm going to be changing um, the tone so this guy is reading, um, you know, as a white building as opposed to right now you go, hey, they, they all look the same. I'm going to put that little bit of sky in his legs here. I got the wrong color. And as you can tell, this, this can go on for quite some time. So I'm going to let Lisa tell us when she's had enough to tape. And we can finish this, or I can finish this at home. And then you will see it on the website. And we shall continue to, to work on this and, and then get you to the point where you can look at how this was finished. Um, I am going to just show you. Um, okay, I'm pull a little bit of you over here. Grays can be a funny thing. And there again, as you see, I I kind of mix all over the place on on my um, palette. You see, right now I'm getting a lot looser with my brush stroke. Um, I ran into the sky there. And even if it's something that you don't necessarily see on your painting, um, I don't know if you can see very well how I'm letting the paint kind of skip in, in areas. That's, it, it just adds a little bit more, um, more painterly, you know, look to it. And, and so don't feel that you need to approach it as if you're painting a wall. You, you can let those areas skip and, and let things happen kind of um, naturally as and, and still have things happen because when you look at that and you kind of squint your eyes it's quite dark and I'm not um, there yet um, and I'm going to continue to build up those areas as you can see I did get a little sloppy there and I put some of my gray into my beautiful blue sky. Um, but as you can see, I also didn't panic. I just figure, you know, you can see if you can work with it. And if you can't, then you know, start over. <laughs> As you see, I can just kind of take the water and um, wet that area 
And this is that my famous polka dot scrub brush where uh, it's still soft enough. It allows me to move that paint. Here I see a little bit of blue. It's just a, a sharp line. Um, I'm just going to knock that down. I don't know if you're able to, to see some of these things that I, I'm seeing up here. Now we were talking about leaving that, that tree there and the giving tree. And I'm going to kind of block in a little bit of the tree just to get that. And there again, see, I'm kind of using um, this brush. I'm not just going to uh, color it in all solid. I, I want those brush strokes. You, you, that's where um, it becomes more of your, your painting, the, the more painterly. See, now I can leave some of those white areas there too because there was snow, even though I don't have snow on my um, my photo, that doesn't mean anything. You can create that as you want. Um, same thing with the uh, maybe shadows in the, the snow. Um, do we want to you know, create a little bit of a structure that, that suggests that maybe there was some snow on the ground. And we'll, we'll see, I guess I brought my sky down so low on this side. We're going to have to That's the, our shadow side <laughs> is, is what's going to happen there. So as you see, I, I just would continue on with bringing in some of the details. Oh, see, there, there I touched uh, some yellow up in this area too. And it, it's not that I can't work with it. I just um, I need to dilute it to, to get it so it doesn't look like it was uh, some kind of oopsie um, mark. Um, it is something that some people will go, oh my gosh, my, ruined my painting. You know, you probably didn't. You just need to uh, come at it at a different angle. Um, and you'll say, yeah, that's fine that way. See, now if I do have snow and I have trees back here, I probably would have the deeper... Um, blue. Oop. Oh, that's kind of nice. And don't feel like you can't um, take your artistic uh, whatever license and, and play with it. You know, there's no reason I, I can't go, okay, well, I'm going to have my sun coming in from this side, so that means my tree is going to cast a shadow. Um, and so, because that's that's going to be some of the, the things that you might find with your painting when you can't, you're like, why? It just doesn't look right. It, you know, you might not have anchored it, is what. And that's, that's created by those shadows that um, they're not always real evident. But um, they, they become evident when you can't see them anymore. Then all of a sudden you're like, hey, wait a minute, why is that not? So even something like that where you, and there again, I, as you, if you notice, I'm kind of using the side of my brush. I'm not painting like this. I, um, it's one of the, you're artistic person. That's what you're doing. You're, Your paintbrush is just your tool. How you use it is is totally your choice. And you can just keep building up some of these layers.
So as you can see, unless I keep you here for the next 10 hours <laughs> watching paint dry, <laughs> um, but hopefully have I given you enough to, to figure out like things and, and so I'll continue working on this and uh, we'll post a, a picture of the uh, finished and then hopefully you'll be able to take a look at it and, and you'll see what I did with um, the end result and hopefully you've, you've picked up a few tidbits or a few things that maybe you'd like to you know play with, try, experiment. Don't forget you can pour that salt down onto your wet painting and it's going to create these interesting little areas and dab that paint off if you want to get rid of it. Um, even sometimes you can come back in and you know when it's pretty dry um, and then just pull things out. So watercolor is a lot of fun to play with and it's it's um it's nice because it is uh, so safe it doesn't have the fumes and it's pretty portable and you can do a lot with just a couple brushes you don't need uh, 50,000 you will probably um, start finding yourself going oh let me try this let me try <laughs> and that that's all well and, and fine it's just it's fun to you just play with um, your brush and, and try to figure out new ways to use it. And uh, as you can see, I mean, a lot of these brushes are, are actually pretty old. But once they're clean, I always reshape them. Um, because you, you don't want to put a brush like this away like that. Um, if you do, can you see that, like, if you put it like that and it's dried like that, it, it trains the bristles to go that way. So you, you want to um, care for your brushes so they're ready for you the next time you go to create your next masterpiece. Um, and so thank you very much for this opportunity. This has been fun. I hope you've learned something. And we'll sign off for now. Happy New Year to everybody. And let's hope the 2021 is, is that allows us to come back out. And if we are allowed back out, um, check into the Blackstone Valley Art Association's website. You will see a lot of things you can participate in. And it's a great group of people and lots of workshops and just the monthly meetings when we are able to have demos. Um, I, that's, I think the best thing is that you, you just even if it's a medium you don't use or it's new to you. Um, let's say you are a fabric artist and you do crocheting or something, but you might listen to somebody else and, and it just, you know, uh, ignites something in you and, and gets you going and inspired. So it, it's good. <laughs> so come, come out and join us, please. And thank you, Upton. Bye. <laughs>